As we gather together, we continue to pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. As we continue to embrace the Christmas journey, we do so trusting God's great gift of redeeming love as we confess our sin and our brokenness. Lord Jesus, you come to us, a gift of love from our God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you come to us, as gift of God, bringing us the promise of God's life. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come to us, a gift of God's love, bringing us the hope of forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to a richer and more abundant life in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Amen. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that the newness of the nativity in the flesh of your only begotten Son may set us free, for ancient servitude holds us bound beneath the yoke of sin. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. St. John, I am writing to you, children, because your sins have been forgiven for his name's sake. I am writing to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I am writing to you, young men, because you have conquered the evil one. I write to you, children, because you know the Father. I write to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you are strong and the word of God remains in you, and you have conquered the evil one. Do not love the world or the things of the world. If anyone loves the word, the world, the love of the Father is not in him, for all that is in the world, sensual lust, enticement for the eyes, and pretentious life, is not from the Father, but is from the world. Yet the world and his enticements are passing away, but whoever does the will of God remains forever. The word of the Lord. Yes. Responsorial song. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Give to the Lord, you families of nations. Give to the Lord glory and praise. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Bring gifts and enter his course. Worship the Lord in holy attire. Tremble before him, all the earth. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He has made the world firm, not to be moved. He governs the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and the earth. 
Alleluia, Alleluia. A holy day has dawned upon us. Come, you nations, and adore the Lord. Today a great light has come upon the earth. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. There was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped day and night with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Good morning. Well, today's Gospel is the tale end of the presentation of Jesus in the temple. And as you may remember, there are actually two prophets involved. And both of them are led in different ways. The one who gets the strongest billing is Simeon. He takes up the bulk of the story. And for Simeon, this is a very spirit-led journey. And we're told specifically, it was revealed to Simeon through the Holy Spirit that he would not die before seeing the Lord's anointed. And then Luke goes on and says, prompted by the Spirit, he went to the temple that day. And that's the day that Je Joseph and Mary brought Jesus to present him. And immediately, he recognized Jesus and sang his praises. The second prophet doesn't get as much billing, but it's Anna who we hear today. Now, I do have to say, when I read about Anna, she's much more devout than I would care to be. I mean, you know, living in the temple all day and all night is just a little bit much. But that's what she did. And Anna, we're not told was touched by the Spirit, although I'm sure she was. But she did two things. She prayed and she fasted. She prayed and she fasted. And I think that the time she spent praying really carved out a space within her for God to dwell. And I think from many points of view, she teaches us the most practical way to carve that space. It's by regularly slowing down, quieting our lives, praising God, but above all, listening. For God's voice. And she did that day in and day out. Now, I don't pray as long as she did, but I do <coughs> pray. And I do think it's that willingness to stop, that willingness to listen, that carves that space within us to be attentive, to be sensitive, and to be able to hear the voice of the Lord. 
Anna did that. And then all she did in response was she sensed the child of Jesus in Jesus for who he was. And she says, and that Luke says, she proclaimed his praises to all who were awaiting the liberation of Jerusalem. Once she sensed who Jesus was, she simply shared her vision. And that's all she had to do. And again, she teaches us, you don't force feed faith on anyone. You proclaim what you have come to know, what you have come to hear. And once you proclaim that which you have heard and that which you know, you have done your job. So Anna, I think, models for us how most of us are going to grow in our faith. It's the regularity of quiet and prayer, and then it's our willingness to give voice to what we have come to hear and know. And let us stand together now as we entrust our prayer to our God. <clears throat> we pray and ask the grace, like Anna, to be persons of deeper quiet <coughs> and greater openness to the moving of God's grace within us. We pray. We continue to pray in gratitude with the great promise of saving, redeeming love, the Christmas proclamation brings, we pray. Lord, hear our the grace and the courage to share our witness to what we have come to know of God's love in Jesus in our lives, we pray. Lord, hear our Let us continue to pray for those participating in our RCIA program to the children of the parish, preparing for the sacraments of First Reconciliation and Eucharist, and our high school youth, preparing for the sacrament of Confirmation, we pray. Lord, Let us continue to pray for the poor, the lonely, and the disadvantaged, that they will experience care, support, and love, we pray. Lord, Let us pray for all refugees, searching for new lives and homes, that they will experience welcome and support, we pray. Lord, Let us continue to pray that Jesus' Christmas promise of peace will come more fully to our hearts and minds, <coughs> we pray. Lord, We've been asked to pray and remember this morning Mike Matthews, Daniel Wilson, and Mary Garcia in gratitude for God's promise of life in its fullness spoken to them, we pray. Lord, hear our for the intentions we hold in our hearts. We pray. Lord, hear our, our gracious and our redeeming God, we pray and ask the grace, like heaven, to be ever more deeply these people who listen 
with the moving of your grace, the sound of your word of love. Continue to guide us, continue to fill us, and continue to give us the grace to speak the wonder of your love. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Join me now in prayer, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice might be acceptable to our gracious and loving God. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in our gifts for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Receive with favor, O loving God, we pray, the offerings of your children, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our joy and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, gracious God, most holy, almighty, and eternal God, through Christ Jesus our Lord. For through him, the holy exchange that restores our life has shone forth today in splendor. When our frailty is assumed by your word, not only does human mortality receive unending honor, but by this wondrous union, we too are made eternal. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy, we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O loving God, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time Jesus was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, while he was at supper with his disciples, he took bread and gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, our gracious God, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ Jesus. We may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, loving God, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Gerald and Alberto our bishops, and all the clergy and the entire people your son has gained for you. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, gracious God, we pray, from every evil. Grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all anxiety as we wait in blessed hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not at our sins, but to the faith of your church and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance <coughs> with your will to live and reign forever <coughs> and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And let us share with one another a sign of the Lord's love and peace. <coughs>
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us stand together in prayer. Loving God, who touch us through our partaking of your sacrament, work, we pray, the effects of its power in our hearts, that we may be made fit to receive your gift through this very gift itself, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your may the blessing of our God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon us all and abide forever. Amen. Let us continue our journey in the peace and love of Christ Jesus. Amen. Say my God.